Now, if you're not me and you've played Pokemon before, you know that in order to catch a Pokemon, you'll have to throw some sort of Pokeball at it. And by chance, you might catch it, you might not catch it. Except it's not totally by pure chance. There is actually a legitimate equation, an algorithm that goes behind the um, likelihood of you catching a Pokemon. Now, for the purpose of this video, I'll talk about the um, catch rates for games in Generation 6, which is Pokemon X and Y, because Generation 7 has actually been released out yet, and I can't actually find any formulas for Generation 7 just yet. So for Generation 6, the equations that are involved are these. So right now it looks a bit all confusing, and what the hell does this have to do with the game, right? So. I'll try and walk through the algorithms with you now. So say you're walking around in the wild and you bump yourself into some wild Pokemon that you want to catch. And so you decided, eh, I'll throw a Pokeball out and see what happens. Okay, maybe you want to weaken it by attacking it, whatever. So at some point you decide to throw out a Pokeball at it. And the first thing that the program will calculate out is what we call the modified catch rate. In this case, I'll call it A. And to find A, the equation is as follows. Now, A depends on a few things. It depends on the maximum HP of the Pokemon you're trying to catch when it has, is at full health, the HP it currently has after you've attacked it or whatever, and then you've got the rate, the catch rate, of the Pokemon, which will depend on diff other different factors. You'll have the um, multiplier for the ball you're using, which you can probably see on this chart, and then you'll have the bonus from the status of the Pokemon. So this bonus status will depend on the state that the Pokemon is in. If it's sleeping or it's frozen, this value will be 2.5. If it's paralyzed, poisoned, or burnt, it'll be 1.5, and if it's normal, it'll just be 1. And then, blah de blah de blah you get some certain values of A out of the equation. Now you're required to find another constant, what we call the shape probability. Now we'll call this B, and it's found by this following equation. So basically, we just shove what A is from the previous equation into um, this equation for B, and then you just round B down to the nearest whole number. And then comes the next part, the interesting part. You know how your Pokemon shakes when you're trying to capture it, when you throw a Pokeball, it goes in, and then it kind of just shakes a bit a few times? Oh yeah, that bit's also calculated. And the first check that's going to be done is going to be check for a critical capture. Now, critical capture increases the chance of the Pokemon being caught. And you can kind of see whether critical capture is going to happen because it's going to be different from a normal capture. If you play uh, Pokemon, you'll, you'll know when a critical capture happens, I think. So what we do is we use this other equation to find C, which is kind of the factor for the critical capture, which again involves A. M is going to be the multiplier, which will depend on how many Pokemons you already have in your Pokédex according to this chart. So of course if you have less than 30 Pokemons, there is no way that you will get this critical capture. Now the computer will generate a random number between 0 and 255. And now this randomly generated number, which I'll call N, is compared against C. If this randomly generated number is less than C, you'll perform a critical capture. Otherwise, you'll continue the check to see if you can capture it normally. Like the computer will generate a random number between 0 and 65,535, which is, interestingly, 2 to the power of 15 minus 1. And then again, I'll call this number n. Now this generated value of n is compared against b, which obviously we found earlier. If n is lower than b, then the Shake Shack passes. And the Shake Shack passes, it doesn't mean you catch the Pokemon. No, you have to perform the Shake Shack three times. So you have to, then the computer will generate a new random number N, compare it against B again, make sure it's less than B, and then you'll do it again. And if you complete it three times, then you'll catch your Pokemon. Now at any Shake Shack, if the generated number N turns out to be greater than or equal to B, the Shake Shack fails and you don't catch 
your Pokemon using the Pokeball. Now, if you fail the first Shake Shack, you won't even see the, po the Pokeball shaking. If you fail the second Shake Shack, you'll see the ball shaking once. If you fail this, the third Shake Shack, you'll see it vibrating three times. If you don't fail any of these three, then you'll just catch your Pokemon. Great. In conclusion, you have to find the modified catch rate A, which will depend on many different factors. And then using that, you'll find the shake probability B, and then the critical capture probability, or C. Then using the value of C you found with a randomly generated number, you perform a critical capture check. If you pass this check, a critical capture is um, performed. If you fail the test, then you'll test to see if you can perform a normal capture. Now, whether you perform a normal capture depends on whether you pass the shake checks which will involve a randomly generated number and the value for B. If you pass three Shake Shacks, you will catch the wild Pokemon. If you don't, if you fail one of these three, then you won't catch your wild Pokemon. And yeah, guys, thank you very much for watching my video on um, catch rate and Pokemon and gaming. I hope that was interesting. And I'll see you again soon. Goodbye. That's new, isn't it? Yeah.